warm welcome to the gavel. I'm Lanre Lassese. I hope you had a fruitful week. Now, with plenary suspended for two weeks, lawmakers in the National Assembly have had their hands full with budget defense sessions featuring different ministries, departments, and agencies. Now, how will you rate the country's budgetary process? Well, that is one question that became the focus during the second budget hearing, which is the last for the 8th National Assembly. That is ahead on the program. And what is the latest on the leadership race for the 9th National Assembly? Well, just stay right there. We have a loaded package for you on that as well. Let's start off with the public hearing on the 2019 budget. The annual national budget hearing is a creation of the 8th National Assembly, where government officials, civil society organizations, and interest groups are brought in to make inputs into the national budget. This is another of such budget hearings, the last one in the 8th Assembly, and it's a time for stock taking of the budget process in the last four years. This hearing offers us, as representatives of the people, a duty to hear the people's perspective on the proposed distribution of our common wealth. It is also important at this point to state that this assembly has made remarkable achievements from its interactions with stakeholders in the budget hearing in the previous years. It, among other things, helped in tackling the issue of double and uncoordinated budgeting lines, identifying and make adequate budgetary provisions for items that were not captured in the executive proposal. The Speaker of the House of Representatives is not happy with the national budgets presented by the executive in the last few years. Over the years, the main problem with a budget submitted by the executive has been that it does not reflect national values and priorities. The budget more often than not only reflects the values and priorities of those who help in crafting it. It is very painful that for some years now, our budget process has been an exercise in either or a combination of audacious optimism and or hypocrisy involving key actors putting together a budget that they fully know would at best be implemented 45%, which by all standards is below average. It is very unfair for the executive to consistently and repeatedly blame the National Assembly of delaying passage of the budget while failing to address the issues of late budget submission on its part. He outlines some efforts by the legislature to amend the country's budgetary process. We took the bold step of addressing this challenge by passing a constitutional amendment bill which sought to compel the executive to submit the budget proposals to the National Assembly not later than 90 days to the end of the fiscal year and also to limit the expenditure that can be incurred in the absence of the Appropriation Act from six months to three months. Furthermore, in yet another audacious effort to improve institutional capacity of the parliament to process and pass budget expeditiously, the National Assembly Budget and Research Office, NABRA Establishment Bill, was passed into law. It was closely modeled after the American Congressional Budget Office, the CBO. Unfortunately, I regret to inform this gathering that these laudable efforts and initiatives were thwarted when the president withheld his assent to these two very critical and important bills. While the speaker is a strong critic of the, the federal government's of budget of performance, which he says is below average, the Minister of Finance argues that the performance is not that appalling. The 2018 budget has performed well in the sense that personal expenditure was 100% performed 
So was that service. And out of 12 months of uh, overhead, we were able to release eight months, and that represents about 66%. The revenue was 55% uh, performed. So if we take the aggregate of that, it is not a very bad performance, considering the fact that the capital budget only became operational after the budget was signed into law in June. And also, we have the opportunity to continue to operate the capital budget until the new budget is passed. But she admits that Nigeria has significant has revenue challenges and explains how the federal government is confronting this problem. We have identified already some new taxes that we will be coming to discuss with the National Assembly. We also are continuously working to broaden the tax base to expand and improve the value-added tax uh, VAT performance. We, are also, we also have a project that is already ongoing where we are targeting high net worth individuals. We have incentives that are planned to revive key economic sectors that are ailing. We have identified some funding models for specific sectors so that uh, we will be more focused. Moving beyond the blame game between the executive and the National Assembly over the persistent late passage of the budget, it is important that Nigeria gets a working budget that meets the aspirations of the people as soon as possible.